Hello everyone. Today, let's see the three most commonly used communication protocols in embedded systems. The first protocol is universal asynchronous receiver and transmitter. The second protocol is serial peripheral interface. And the third protocol is inter-squared communication. Now let's first understand why do we need such communication protocols. Communication protocols are a set of rules that allow us to transmit data between embedded devices. For example, consider this project. In this project, we are actually sending the data that we have received from pressure sensor into the display and parallelly, we are even sending the data via Bluetooth to the mobile phone. In order to achieve this, we are using UART communication to talk between the Bluetooth and main microcontroller unit. And secondly, we are using the pressure sensor to capture the data and talk to the main microcontroller unit. Finally, even after processing the information, we are, we are displaying the uh, data via OLED display. So in order to talk to the display, we are using I2C communication. So like that, in order to interface between many embedded devices, we need such kind of communication protocols. So let's quickly move on and see what our first protocol and how it is designed. The first protocol that we are going to see is Universal Asynchronous Receiver and Transmitter, also known as UART. As shown in the figure, the connections are two wires, that is, one TX of the master is connected to the RX of the slave and one RX of the master is connected to the TX of the slave. This is a one-on-one -on -one serial communication between one master and one slave. The frame format is shown below, so it consists of one start bit. This start bit is an initiation of the start of communication to the slave and it may have 5 to 9 data bits. Along with this, we have one parity bit that is either it can be even parity or odd parity depending on the depending on the register that you are going to configure. And the last one is the stop bits, one or two stop bits which initiates the slave that is the stop of communication. UART was discovered by Gordon Bell at Digital Equipment Corporation in 1960s. UART can transmit data up to 5 megabits per second between two devices at 9600 baud rate. When I say baud rate, baud rate is nothing but the collection number of symbols transferred per second. When I say symbols, it can be one bit or more than one bit. And the bit rates is nothing but number of bits transferred per second. Since you can see here, no clock is involved, but there is one more. Uh, another communication method of UART called as USART, which is also known as Universal Synchronous Asynchronous Receiver and Transmitter. This type of communication needs a clock interface for the communication. So let's see the features of UART. The first feature is maximum speed. So UART can achieve a maximum speed of 5 megabits per second, and that is really huge. And the second feature is you just need two OS to communicate between one master and one slave and it is a one master and one slave communication so that makes simpler and then coming to the application the there are various applications of UART like you will be able to see UART communication being used for GPS modules temperature sensors color sensor pressure sensors and a lot of sensors like this so it finds a plenty of application in your embedded systems and the baud rate that is set between master and slave must not vary more than 10%. So if it is more than 10%, then there, there can be a lot of uh, losses that may, have, that may occur in the transmission. So this is about UART. The next protocol that you are going to see is Serial Peripheral Interface, also known as SPI Communication Protocol. SPI communication protocol was designed by Motorola in 1979 and it is a four-wire protocol. As shown in the figure, it has only one master and n number of slaves. It is a four-wire protocol. The first one is system clock. The second one is master output, slave input. And the third pin is master input, slave output. And the final pins are slave select pin, also known as chip select pin. So these slave select pins are nothing but the pins uh, that we are going to use to select particular slave. And the data transmission can be done in serial peripheral interface as serially or even full duplex communication. So serially in the sense either master can talk to slave 
or even the slave can talk to master or it can be even full duplex communication like even the master can also talk to the slave and even the slave can also talk to the master simultaneously the maximum number of slaves that spi supports is it depends on the number of gpi weapons that are available in the processor or even the controller the speed that we can achieve from spi is up to 60 megabits per second and this is the reason that it is used in various applications of color tft displays as well as sd cards the reason is with such kind of very good uh, speed achievement we can send the data fast faster from the main mcu to the peripheral that is uh, as you can see there can be a lot of transmissions in color color tft displays as well as we can uh, copy the data from main mcu or uh, the processor to the sd cards in much much faster rate so this is the reason it finds applications in color tft displays as well as sd cards now let's see how the timing diagram of the spi is the first way from that you are going to see system clock also known as s clock which is the clock that is used for spi communication the second way form is slave select pin slave select pin acts as a pin to choose the particular slave and this pin also indicates the start of communication and stop of communication as shown in the figure as shown in the timing diagram uh, we can see the slave select pin will be normally high so it must be pulled from high to low to indicate the start of transmission when the pin is pulled from high to low the data transmission occurs and again the data transmission stops when the pulled when the pin is pulled from low to high the third way from that we are seeing is master output slave input so master output slave input and uh, this pin is particularly used to send data to the slave as you can see when the pin of slave select pin is pulled from high to low the data is sent to the slave is 0011101 and again at the ending stage the data is pulled from low to high similarly master input slave output pin can be used to send data to the master from the slave so the similar way when the slave select pin pin is pulled from high to low the data is sent again back to the master and again uh, at the ending stage the slave select pin is pulled from low to high now let's see the pros and cons of serial peripheral interface the first advantage that we can achieve from spi is it is full duplex communication so we can talk to each other from master to the slave simultaneously since we use two separate lines called miso and mosi the second advantage is there is no limit for data bits and these data bits can be configured in the particular register of a soc the third advantage of spi is it is much much faster than i2c protocol which we are going to see in the next uh, next stage and then uh, it is much faster than even uart protocol so the speed as i told it can touch up to 60 megabits per second which is really good and the final cons of our spi communication is we don't have error checking mechanism and even acknowledgement bits unlike in uart uh, where we have parity parity uh, bit field uh, here we don't have such kind of mechanisms for error checking and even there are no acknowledgement bits are present the second disadvantage is we need four wires this is the reason the cost of spi communication is much much higher than you are and like to see the third and final disadvantage is only one master can be used in spi communication protocol and there can be n number of slaves in spi so now we have seen how what are the pros and cons of spi communication protocol are let's move on further and see how i2c communication protocol works and what are its advantages and disadvantages the next communication protocol that we are going to see is inter integrated circuit communication protocol which is also known as i2c communication protocol i2c communication protocol is a multi master and multi slave protocol which was invented by philip semiconductor in the year 1982 as shown in the figure it has multi masters and multiple slaves and each slaves have unique 7 byte addresses 7 bits of addresses the maximum speed that we can achieve from i to c is up to 3.4 megabits per second and the data transmission can be serially done and off duplex communication one good feature of i2c communication protocol is it is a multi master and multi slave communication protocol which is not a, which is not present in spi as well as uart now let's analyze the 
frame format for pi squared c communication protocol. The first condition is the start condition followed by the frame. The start condition is nothing but when the C system clock line is high, the serial data line must be put from high to low. This indicates the start of communication to the slave. And this is followed by a seven byte of seven bits of slave addresses and followed by read or write bit, and then you get an acknowledgement bit. Further, we have eight bits of data to be sent and followed by an acknowledgement bit. Finally, at the end, we have stop condition. This stop condition is nothing but when the serial clock line is high, the serial data line must be put from low to high to indicate the slave that it is a stop of communication. And the maximum number of slaves that the device can support is up to seven, it, it has seven bits of addresses. Hence, two power seven is nothing but 128 devices are supported by I2C protocol. Now, let's look into the advantages that is pros and cons of I2C communication protocols. Acknowledgement bit will help the error handling feature in I2C communication protocol. As I said before, I2C communication protocol is a multi-master and multi-slayer communication protocol. It just uses two wires for communication and it is a very good hard advantage for the communication protocol. The disadvantages could be it is an off duplex communication protocol either the master can talk to slave or the slave can talk to master but not simultaneously. The hardware complex becomes much much higher when the number of devices increase and the speed is slower than UART and SPI communication protocol. I2C finds various applications in many such peripherals. Few of them could be the OLED displays, the real time clocks peripherals and the barometric pressure sensors. So this is about I2C communication protocol and that's about the three communication protocols that we have discussed today. If you like my video, please do hit the like button and for more such videos, please do subscribe my YouTube channel and hit the bell button. Have a nice day. Thank you.